The Battle of Landen, in the current Belgian province of Flemish Brabant, was a battle in the Nine Years' War, fought in present-day Belgium on 29 July 1693 between the French Army of Marshal Luxembourg and the Allied Army of King William III of England. The French assaulted the Allied position three times before the French cavalry finally penetrated the Allied defences and drove William's army from the field in a rout. The battle was, however, quite costly for both sides, the French losing 9,000 men to the Allies 19,000. The French failed to follow up on their victory, allowing William to escape. Details of the battle Marshal Luxembourg, having with a series of feints induced William to detach portions of his army, rapidly drew together superior numbers in the face of the Allied camps, which lay in a rough semicircle from Elixum on the right to near Landen, thence along the Landen Brook on the left. William had no mind to retire over the Getter River and entrenched a strong line from La Thrunio and enter near Landen. On the right of this line, the ground was broken and gave plenty of cover to both sides. This section, being regarded as the key to the position, was strongly garrisoned. In the centre the open ground between Neo and Den and Neo London was solidly entrenched, in front of it Rumsdorp was held as an advance post. The left at Neo Landen rested upon the Landen Brook and was difficult to access. William's right was his dangerous flank, and Marshal Luxembourg was aware that the Allies' front was somewhat long for the numbers defending it. The intervention of troops drawn from one wing to reinforce the other would almost certainly be too late. Under these conditions Luxembourg's general plan was to throw the weight of his attack on the La Neerwinden section, especially on Neerwinden, itself, and to economize his forces. As economy of force was understood before Napoleon's time, elsewhere, delivering holding attacks or demonstrations, as might be necessary, would thus prevent the Allied center and left from assisting the right. Marshal Luxembourg had about 80,000 men to William's 50,000. Opposite the entrenchments of the centre he drew up nearly the whole of his cavalry in six lines, with two lines of infantry intercalated. A corps of infantry and dragoons was held off for the attack on Neer Landen and Rumsdorp. The troops destined for the main attack, 28,000 of all arms, formed up in heavy masses opposite Neo and Den. This proportion of about one-third of the whole force to be employed in the decisive attack in the event proved insufficient. The troops opposite the Allied center and left had to act with the greatest energy to fulfill their containment mission. At La Neo and then the eventual success of the attack was bought only at the price of the utter exhaustion of the troops. After a long cannonade the French columns moved to the attack, converging on Neo and N, a smaller force assaulted LAER. The edge of the villages was carried, but in the interior a murderous struggle began, every foot of ground being contested. After a time William himself, leading a heavy counter-attack, expelled the assailants from both villages. A second attack, pushed with the same energy, was met with the same determination. Meanwhile, the French in other parts of the field had pressed their attacks home. The six lines of cavalry in the center, after enduring the fire of the Allies for many hours, trotted over the open ground and up to the entrenchments to meet with certain defeat. At Neer Landen and Rumsdorp there was severe hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Meantime, the two intact lines of infantry in the French centre had been moved to their left and formed the nucleus for the last great assault on Neerwinden, which proved too much for the exhausted defenders. They fell back slowly and steadily, defying pursuit. The English Coldstream guards even captured a colour. However, at this crisis the initiative of a subordinate general, the famous military writer Fouquiers, converted the hard-won local success into a brilliant victory. William had begun to move troops from his centre and left to the right in order to meet the great assault on Neerwinden. Fouquiers, observing this, led the cavalry of the French centre once again straight at the entrenchments. This time the French squadrons, surprising the Allies in the act of manoeuvring, rode over every body of troops they met. 
Nothing remained for the Allies but a hurried retreat over the Ghetto. Hundreds died crossing the river. A stubborn rearguard of English and Scottish troops led by William himself saved the Allied army, of which all but the left wing was exhausted and in disorder. Aftermath it is during this battle that, seeing the French determination to gain the high ground in spite of the murderous allied volleys, William exclaimed, Oh, that insolent nation, Marshal Luxembourg had won his greatest victory, thanks in no small measure to Fouquier's exploit, but had the assaults on the O and N been made as Napoleon would have done, with one half or two thirds of his forces instead of one third. The victory would have been decisive and Fouquier's would have won his laurels not for forcing the decision at the cost of using up his cavalry, but for annihilating the remnants of the Allied army in the pursuit. The material results of the battle were 19,000 Allied troops killed, wounded or taken prisoner, as opposed to 9,000 French casualties. 80 guns and a great number of standards and colours were also taken by the French. Among the casualties on the French side were Patrick Sarsfield, the Jacobite Earl of Lucan, who was in command of the remnants of the Jacobite Irish army after the surrender at Limerick. He was struck by a bullet in the chest and taken to the town of High, about 20 miles away, where he died three days later. Oh, that this were for Ireland, he said as he expired. The Duke of Berwick was taken prisoner in the first assault, but afterwards exchanged for the Duke of Ormond. Prince Conti and Marshal Joyers were lightly wounded. Both sons of Marshal Luxembourg present at that battle were also wounded. His oldest son was just lightly wounded, but the other nearly lost his leg and would never fully recover from his wounds. Among the casualties on the Allied side were Count Solmes, who was killed, the Duke of Ormond, who was saved by the large diamond on his finger. On seeing this duel, the French soldier who was about to kill him changed his mind, deciding that this man could be worth more alive than dead. The Earl of Galway was wounded and taken prisoner. However, using the fact that he was French, he managed to escape in the confusion. The Prince of Brabancone, governor of Namur, was killed. William followed with a silver medal struck to commemorate his victory. It was designed by Jan Boskim and featured a Roman bust of William crowned with a laurel and an aerial battle between a falcon and a stork. The French commander, Marshal Luxembourg, captured so many flags that he could make a tapestry with them inside Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. For this reason he was nicknamed Le Tapissier de Notre Dame, English, Scottish and Irish Order of Battle, Cavalry Royal Horse Guards, First King's Dragoon Guards, Prince of Wales's Dragoon Guards, Fourth Royal Irish Dragoon Guards, The King's Carabineers, Fourth Queen's Own Hussars, Infantry First Battalion, First Foot Guards, Second Battalion, First Foot Guards, 1st Battalion, Coldstream Guards, 1st Battalion, Scots Guards, 2nd Battalion, Scots Guards, 1st Battalion, 1st Regiment of Foot, 2nd Battalion, 1st Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 2nd Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 3rd Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 4th Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 7th Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 14th Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 16th Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 19th Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 21st Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 25th Regiment of Foot, 1st Battalion, 26th Regiment of Foot, 